Okay, how's everybody doing? So this is a little bit of a, just sort of a mini kind of episode. Uh, I want to just talk just a little bit about static grass for uh, a little bit. Um, maybe as a, as a uh, sort of midweek kind of shorty kind of thing, because I know a lot of people don't always have time to watch, um, you know, long videos. I mean, I don't mind doing the longer ones because a lot of people have requested them, but it's nice to just do something quick and short just to touch base on a few things. So one of the things I want to mention or talk about quickly is about static grass because I haven't talked about the application that much since really Glover Road or the very beginning of River Road. And I just want to uh, mention a couple of things like on the actual you know, the static grass applicator uh, that I use by Woodland Scenics, which is this one here, there are many versions of it. And then it comes with this little comb, which I'll talk about in a second as well. So the static grass applicator um, is not necessarily um, the be all end all tool. Okay. Um, and what I mean by that is, is it's just another tool, right? Like, I think it was, um, in regards to static grass, I think it was Tom Klamoski, I got to give him credit for mentioning that, unquote, sorry, Tom, if I'm wrong about what you said exactly, but said that the most profound, um, or most important thing that's ever happened to model railroading in the last decade or more is static grass. Like all the different sizes, right? You got 12 mil, 10 mil, 7 mil, 4 mil, 2 mil, light green, medium green, dark green, straw grass. It really has, like... Everything you see here, like even, uh, let me just, I don't want to lose my lavalier mic. I'll just be careful here for a sec. So I'm just going to grab one of these trees. So these trees were, are a combination of uh, wood and uh, wire and um, acrylic uh, fiber paste. But I use static grass for the fine limbs, like the, that leafs out. Right, like they were painted dark brown as well, and then I flocked them. So that's static grass too. So all the trees that I do basically have static grass uh, in, like it's one element in them. And then of course, it's everywhere, right? Like it really does transform a layout. And I just wanna say that once again, like these are great to have, they're a good tool, but they're not, like they won't do all of this. They just won't do it like that. Because if, because if you try to do this with that tool, you have to choreograph all your glue applications like 101 ways to Sunday. <laughs> you know, you really do. Like, it's all about the layers of glue, right? Like static grass applicators, like if you just put a swath of glue across a patch and you, and you go back and forth, it's going to look like a mowed lawn, right? And then you get into things where I'm just going to stab in some glue and do it. And then you get a patch work. And then you multiply that with five layers, let's say, of different colors. And now you're really getting somewhere. But you need to take your time at it, right? You can't do it overnight. Like, there's just no way. Like, this section two, I'm actually liking section two more now than even section one, even though I don't have any issues with section one. But I just love the, you know, the, like, I've been adding more green here because I laid in all these earlier sort of dead, faded kind of grass layers. And then now I'm sprucing it up with some more fresh grass. And I'm really liking it, how the, the layout's coming alive. And I'm going to show you how I do it right here. But most of this was all done by hand. And some would say, oh, no way, right? That takes too long. Really? It takes too long? Okay. Um, that's the way it is, right? Like, you don't have to do it all at once. You can actually do it, like, um, you know, one layer at a time, right? Or one phase at a time. So it doesn't take that long. You just work at it slowly over time, right? So... Um, this comb, you can see I laid in, I stabbed in here. I'm going to show you how I do 7 mil right here. But I laid this in last night, and so it needs to be combed out. That's what this comb is for. Like, see that? Okay, you can run the vacuum. I'm not going to do it now because it's too loud. But you can run the vacuum while you're doing that with your sock over it, and you can save and recover a lot of the static grass. But for the purposes of the video, I'm just going to show you how I use this comb. Um, so I comb it all out, and it helps to um, sort of reconcile the grass with the other lighter grass. It just combs it out like you'd comb the mop, you know, <laughs> if you still have one. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so you can see there, right? A lot of it's coming out. So I can save a lot of that, okay? And repurpose it, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this up a bit and I'm gonna show you how I stab it in here, okay? Okay, so what I'm going to do is just take a brush like this, a thin brush. Okay, it's just a, actually this is a very cheap brush, really cheap. Uh, it comes in a package of a dozen or so at the craft store. But you know, don't underestimate some of these cheap brushes when you use them for a glue brush, like a water-based one where you can clean it in water all the time. They're actually quite good for, uh, for this. And I like a thin one because I can stab in. So when you've already got the first layer of static grass in, you're kind of home free because then you can just build on it and then you know you do a bit of work you wake up the next day whatever you go oh wow that looks really cool right and it's just a collective thing that you build upon like uh, try to think of the you know the scene that you're working on because i have section one two i'm not working on three till i'm satisfied with these two sections primarily and i'm getting very close but try to see it as um Okay, there's a show by the uh, uh, under the Twilight Zone from 1964. It's called uh, Stop Over in a Quiet Town. I mentioned this way back in the Glover Road days, and you should watch that episode. You can probably watch it on YouTube for free maybe or something, but, but if you can get the DVD or whatever, it's hilarious, right? I don't want to give it away, but it's about these people that basically, um, you know, they, they're out all night together. They get on a train, and they and they leave to go home and they keep arriving to the same station <laughs> i don't want to give it away though because it's really good but every model railroader needs to see stop over in a quiet town by the twilight zone okay because it is just a fantastic episode black and white just a total classic anyway so i take some matte medium in this case i'm going to use seven mil like seven millimeter is actually a uh, little bit more of a challenge to pinch and stab in 12 like this is much easier and i've shown how you do it but i'll show you how i do it with seven mil it's very similar right so i'll just start right here so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to uh, just stab in a bead along this center part here because i want to add a little bit of light green uh, just to add a bit of contrast to it because this is kind of wild right like it's not going to be um, it's going to get knocked down. It's had a long, hot summer. It's the fall. Now things are coming back. But there's going to, still going to be lots of different colorations in the grasses, right? And I don't think it really matters as long as you mix them up nice. And if you want to use your airbrush, you can, you can go in too and change the color a bit. So I like to take a little tray like this. And then I just basically take some in my uh, forefinger and thumb. And I just pinch some like this. It just go go back and forth like just like like don't give up just because you can't do it the first time it just takes a little bit and then muscle muscle memory takes over and then come in and then just stab the clump in and then just let go okay and you can touch it with your finger just to fan it out a bit and if it's matte medium that you're using which is quite grippy stuff and stays wet for a while uh, works excellent. So just stab in a little bit more, push it down with your finger. Excuse my hand in the way there. Just stab in a little bit more. You think, oh, I'm going to be there for years. No, you won't. Plug in for an hour or two and you'll be surprised and you'll look like, like commit a solid hour and you wouldn't believe how much ground you'll cover. Like once you get into a rhythm and then when you uh, begin to dress it and comb it out the next day and vacuum it up, it just looks awesome. It really does. So that's the art of static grass, right? Uh, it's really just about layers. Like I've been, like I've worked this area over, a, I don't know, 20 times or visited it 25 times, like areas like it, like here, I've gone in here a few times I've, up here. Like I go to other parts of the layout. Then one day I look at this section. Well, I'm going to do this right now. Let me just show you this before I close this photo clamp goes flying right is uh really in sorry is uh really inspiring okay see this 
when I like I bought this magazine it's um, it's this one TRP right okay and the episode is issue number 29 first quarter 2022 but some of the photos in here are really inspiring right and when I saw this like last week like I think I mentioned I was a little bit flatlined and a little bit bummed out just uh, just for a couple of days though right I mean it happens right you get away from the loud it's good for you to get away from it anyway and what I was just leafing through and these things they were blowing them out because they're a year old I think I I think I got it for free or something or a buck or something I can't remember but when I looked at this I was thumbing through I went oh man I got to go back to that section I got to look it over and tweak it up because I'm so close and I never saw this photo before I just based this work on local photos around here so there's a lot of scenes like this all over North America so you know where the where the green grass grows in and some of the more uh, maintained main lines on the left there you can see and then there's some you know other short lines crossing through or siding stuff like that and just in a small area and that's what I've done here basically and uh, it's really made this area pop it really feels immersive so uh, you know find a good photo that you really like and then work from that and use it for inspiration and uh, you'll surprise yourself okay have a great day and uh, happy modeling, and uh, we'll see you soon. Cheers.